Hi guys, look what Sony sent over for review. It is their recently released 70 to 200 f 2.8 G Master version 2 lens. And this is about $2,798. Well, exactly $2,798 on BNH right now as of May 1st. 2022 and uh, this really falls in line in terms of price with other high-end 70 to 200 2.8 lenses but what exactly is a high-end lens and why is this one considered sony's best 70 to 200 replacing their other one i figured while i reviewed it i'll talk about what makes this lens the price it is. All right, let's get into it. And make sure you stay to the end of this video, not only for the algorithm and yours truly, but also I will give you a couple of tips that can get more out of this lens for you. And one of them does include the little ZV-E10. Oh, look at my little Dougie. He looks all dressed up with a nice big lens on him. And uh, it has a purpose. So I'll be showing pictures throughout the video as I talk about this lens and about this lens. Who would want to use this lens? Well, I mean, the, the obvious people are people who are shooting sports, people who are shooting wildlife, birders, as some people call themselves. But you can also do it for cityscapes. I, I used it for city Cityscapes, I like that. And you can also use a telephoto for landscapes. There, you could use this for anything. Portraits, whatever you want. It's just, you know, maybe not super wide stuff because it has a 70, but you know what I'm saying. And this is a professional lens for people who rely on their cameras to make their living. This type of lens is a no-brainer, especially with what this offers. And when you're talking about professionals, a lot of those people will want a high burst rate camera with a lens that can keep up with that. And this guy can. He, this 30 frames per second on the A1, this lens can focus. You won't miss hardly any shots, if any at all with a 30 frames per second burst rate the autofocus is amazing because it uses four xd linear high thrust linear motors it sounds dirty but it's not it's magic it's almost like they slide on rails it's a floating system and it's dead silent and it's so fast and it's so accurate it's almost instantaneous and tracking in autofocus also works extremely well even when you're zooming in and out you can still track subjects and keep them in focus with a very high hit rate and that is a very difficult thing to do when you are trying to engineer a lens so good on you sony it's so fast it tracked me as as I ran away from my wife when I told her I'm going to buy this lens. And speaking of the zoom, it's an all internal zoom. And I love that very much. First of all, I like the look of that a lot better instead of the dog's lipstick. You know what I'm saying? Where the ex lens extends out. I know it's a little more compact in your bag, but I would prefer First of all, the look of that, and secondly, functionality-wise, you know, it uh, keeps balance much better. So if you're running this on a gimbal or something, the, the weight won't shift as you are zooming in and out because the lens stays constant. And you talk about constant, how about focus breathing? There is barely any focus breathing in this lens, which is obviously fantastic for video, but it's also great when you're shooting, say, landscape photography and you want to do focus stacking. I hear a lot of people saying, ah, you know, focus breathing, who cares when you're taking photos? A lot of people care when you're taking photos because you want to stack your photos to keep everything in focus from really close to infinity, then, you know, you'll be stacking a bunch. And if there's focus breathing throughout, that really messes you up. It's very difficult. You can do it, but it just takes a lot more time, whereas as, uh, this guy makes it easy and for video absolutely essential love it for video now while the lens is not officially parfocal which means so if you're zoomed in on an object and you have that in focus manually focused on a particular object and then you zoom all the way out and if it stays in focus perfectly then the lens is considered to be parfocal now while they say it's not parfocal. In my tests, I saw that it actually was at least very, very close. And since I have uh, the new focus mapping on the a7 IV, I can show you exactly what I saw. Now, isn't that cool? That is pretty close to parfocal to me. The 13 stayed in focus the whole time. And of course, this is Sony, so the autofocus is so amazing. If you left it in AFC and zoomed in and out, you probably wouldn't have a problem anyway, but it is nice to know for those who want to manually focus, you can zoom in and out and you pretty much stay perfectly on focus. It's absurdly sharp. It looks as sharp 
as a prime lens to me. Corner to corner sharpness is great. Chromatic aberration is fantastically controlled. There's barely any on the lens. It's got a lovely bokeh and the balls are nice and round like I like my balls. Nice and round with no onion ringing. Well, you know, a bit, tiny, tiny bit, but like very little onion ringing at all. And it's just such a nice fall off from uh, what's in focus to what is out of focus. It's just, they did a great job with the bokeh. It has a fantastic lens coating, the AR2 lens coating that Sony puts on there, which really helps to control flare and ghosting. If you know, you're shooting into a light or the sun, a lot of times your uh, photos will look washed out or there will be large glares throughout the photos. And uh, this AR coating does a great job of minimizing that effect. You also want to use your lens hood if you want to get rid of that effect completely most of the time. And it's got a great lens hood. Look at this, nice and round. I, li I like the round instead of the pedal because if you want to lay it down, there you go. It also has a nice little rubber tip because they know you're going to lay it down. And it has this little flappy here. Where is it? Where's the up? Yeah, this way. And then you uh, you can do a little, you got a filter in there? Ah, with your ring right there. Huh? Put my finger in there. High thrusting action. Am I right? No, I'm not. Don't. Now this one I'll adjoin together as one benefit, but it's really to the weight and the balance. The weight is fantastic. This lens might look heavy, but it's not. I've been holding this up for a long time. And y yes, I know I'm a bit of an Adonis, a Herculean type figure, but still even I would get tired just holding it here in front if it was heavy. It is not, it is 1,045 grams. And not only is that not very heavy, the balance is just so fantastic. I, I can't really describe it unless, you know, you pick one up in your hand, but basically, well, maybe I can describe it. The weight is shifted back here instead some lenses like the old version of this lens were more front heavy so when you were holding it here in your delicate hands you would uh, you'd want to go down because the lens was so heavy but now more of the weight is shifted back here so it's more balanced in your hand leading to less hand fatigue and strain and just an easier use it's just such a great job with the weight and balance these types of lenses i used to think were way too big and heavy to carry around but uh, nowadays boy oh look at that huh it's weather sealed, of course. They don't guarantee 100% dust and water resistance, but I would have no trouble taking this out in any kind of condition that I'd be comfortable taking out any camera in. Oh, and this one is bonkers. The minimum focusing distance of this lens at 70 millimeters is a 0.4 of a meter, which means you can basically get right here. In fact, I'll show you exactly. Line it up to the center here. So right there, the edge of that measuring tape is where you can put a subject and it will be in focus at the 70 millimeter mark. That is, you can basically get macro shots with this thing. That is just a crazy good advantage that I really didn't expect out of this lens. And zoomed all the way to 200 millimeters, you can focus at 82 centimeters. That is just, that's just crazy. And that is just some of the engineering magic that went into this lens. There's also all of these physical advantages on the lens itself that will help professional shooters when they're out in the field doing some stuff quick on the fly. You know what I mean? They don't have time. That model, she's getting cold in her string bikini. You, you got to hurry up before she gets all those unsightly goosebumps. Those guys have nice jobs. So the first thing I'll mention is my favorite thing, and that is it has an aperture ring, a physical one right here on the lens. You can have it clicky or declicked if you want uh, to have it smooth, say you're doing video and you want to open your iris smoothly, you can do that. And if you have, I think it's the FX6 that has the internal variable NDs, you can do all these cool movements where you change your aperture while the ND filter kicks in so the background goes from clear to blurry behind the subject. Uh, it's super cool. But I just love an aperture ring. I leave it on the click mode because I like to know where I am on my lens at all time. You can also just put it in the A and it'll operate like any other lens on your camera. And in fact, you wanna leave it in the A, you can do an iris lock. You can also lock it so that it never slips into A by accident. Very good to have that button for the iris lock. Of course, it has an autofocus and manual focus button, essential, and it has a full-time DMF. Now, I love this thing because, so you're in, say, AFC, a continuous autofocus, like I like to be in, but sometimes I'm trying to take a picture of something, but there's a leaf that's blowing in the way, and I don't want that leaf. I don't want this to glom onto that leaf. I want to get the thing that is behind the leaf. It's a lady in a string bikini. She paid me to be there. I'm not just some kind of 
creep and so I can just turn the focus ring and then that will override the AFC on the camera because that button is engaged and it's just that I I love that. It has a focus range limiter button so that the camera won't go too far away from what you want to focus on when you want to focus on a specific area. A very great feature to have for pro photographers. Of course, it has optical steady shot, but it has three modes of optical steady shot. The first is your general optical steady shot. And then the second one is when you want to pan left and right, then uh, that mode works best for that. And the third one is if you have erratic movements, you know, like birds or a husband running away from his wife when he bought a lens, then you want to put it on mode three. And then finally, it has three custom mode buttons, but you customize it to the one thing so that no matter which way you have your camera, your thumb or your finger, however you shoot is always next to one of the buttons. If you want to do like eye detect autofocus or something like that, you know what I mean? And now for the stuff that I promised at the beginning of the video, hold on, Dougie, your time will come. But first, you this is compatible with the Sony teleconverter, the 1.4 or the two times teleconverter. So you can have your 200 millimeter lens turn into a 400 millimeter lens for 548 US dollars if you want to pick those up. And this lens works very well with that teleconverter. I don't have one, so I can't show you any examples, but of all the examples I have seen, it is extremely sharp even with that teleconverter. But maybe you don't want a teleconverter because you do lose two stops of light for a two times teleconverter. Well, I have a solution for you. It is the Sony APS-C line. This little camera here is $699 when it's in stock. I know right now we're having a global chip shortage, so it's hard to find this guy in stock. However, for $699, now you have a 1.5 times crop on the APS-C. Since it takes the same E-mount, then uh, your, your 200 millimeter lens can be 300 millimeters with little Dougie. And you still keep that 2.8 of light, huh? Genius? Yes. I'm sure a lot of you thought of that already, but I'm putting it in. Oh, you could also buy the two times teleconverter and stick it on Doug. And now you have a 600 millimeter lens, huh? Oh, buddy. <laughs> now, for those of you who are lucky enough to have an A7R4 or an A1, you could actually just go into APS-C crop mode yourself and you will get 1.5 times reach on your camera and the teleconverter will do the same thing. So you see how those high resolution cameras pay such great dividends when you're talking about fancy lenses like the 70 to 200. But if you take around a tiny Sony APS-C camera, you also have a second camera body for when you need it. Whoa, that is a lot of goodness. So once again, thanks to Sony, I have to pack this up tonight. I have to send it back in the mail and I definitely will do that. I'm not keeping this, I promise. But in summary, if you are a working professional or you're just someone who wants the best of the best, this lens is just, it's phenomenal. It's amazing in almost every way. Oh, cameras are so exciting these days. It distracts me from the garbage fire that is the world. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. I'll be sure to answer it. And then we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye. I know Dougie. I love him too.